Sorry. Welcome everyone uh, for joining uh, to our webinar today. So our webinar today is on managing production grade radish in Kubernetes using QTB. Um, so today uh, our speaker is Habibur Rahman. He's a software engineer at Apps Code. He is going to kind of give us an introduction to how Redish is managed with QTB and then give a live demo. Uh, you can ask any question during the demo using the Zoom chat feature. So in the bottom of your screen, you should see a chat button. You can click on that and ask us questions. We'll uh, read those questions at the end of the presentation. And uh, you can also ask questions at that time too. So thank you for joining again. And uh, with that, uh, Iman, take it away. Hello, everyone. I'm Habib Rahman Iman, software engineer at Scott. So today I will demonstrate how to run a production guest uh, Redis cluster on Kubernetes. So uh, here is my table of content. So firstly, I will discuss about uh, what makes Redis safe and reliable to run in production grid. Then uh, we will see uh, what QT managed Redis offers us. Then I will demonstrate some of the features from our QT uh, managed Redis cluster, uh, like uh, Redis clustering with Sentinel. Then we are going to see the high, high availability for our Redis cluster. Then we are going to uh, take a look at our backup and restore features, uh, which is from S uh, Stash, uh, which is also a uh, Fscode product. So then there will be a question and answer session. So let's just start. So the first question is, what makes the database uh, production grid? Uh, so that we can say that uh, we can say uh, safely and reliably run our uh, database in production. So uh, uh, here are some features like the high availability. Uh, uh, so that uh, we don't, uh, in case of uh, like uh, in case of any failure situation, so that uh, we, we don't uh, face any downtime for the production TV. Uh, uh, like uh, like uh, there are three replicas, then one is going to be down, then uh, the uh, the primary one is going to be down for some reason, like network partition or uh, or disaster situation. Then another replica is going to uh, uh, take over the role of the primary, so that we can connect to our TV. So yeah, that is uh, really important for our high availability. Then uh, security, like uh, uh, we need uh, we need to sec uh, securely uh, configure our uh, servers uh, with TLS so that uh, we have the proper security for our server. So then here is the uh, version upgrading. Like uh, you are using a current version, then some, after some years of time, uh, you will see that the new version has been released. So uh, you want to uh, use those uh, uh, new uh, versions, uh, new features. So you, so that, uh, so we need to uh, need, a, uh, need something like that so that we can easily uh, uh, upgrade our database version to the latest one. So, and there is a uh, scaling, uh, like uh, uh, like you, if you have running uh, one node for for, for initial uh, for initially, then you, after some uh, time of period, you realize that you need a cluster. Then uh, you need to upgrade your node from one to like three or five or something like that. Then in that case, you need the support of horizontal scaling. Uh, and in case of uh, uh, in case of uh, CPU and memory uh, uh, storage, uh, you need to just uh, increase that uh, that CPU memory so that you can optimize your performance better. Then uh, then we we need to handle like uh, some sorts of disaster uh, disaster situation like uh, uh, if uh, what happened if you just copy your data for uh, with some uh, some sort sorts of uh, 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 so then you need to just uh, ensure that you don't lose any, any of your data. Like, uh, uh, so you have the proper backup and restore process. Uh, with that, you can just uh, 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 restore data in a safe, uh, safe, uh, safe, in a safe, uh, safe zone. So uh, let's take a look at uh, what actually QTB offers us. So, here are some features like uh, we have the support for clustering, like sharding, uh, the sharding cluster. Uh, then we have also support for the Redis Sentinel, uh, which is uh, including our latest release. Uh, uh, in both cases, we have the support for automatic failover. Uh, 
uh, then we have the uh, we have support for our backup and recover uh, with uh, with stash. Uh, this is actually interface features where you can just uh, ensure that you are backing your data properly so that you, in, in case of any disaster situation, you just recover from this backup uh, in any way. So then you have the uh, support for like uh, rotating your TLS uh, certificates or update your TLS certificates then uh, for your server site. Uh, and you can also add the TLS certificate if initially you haven't uh, created your server with the uh, TLS uh, secret configuration. So yeah. Then we have also support for the automated version update. Like uh, we have the support for, uh, it, it is also in our enterprise uh, edition. There is some sorts of ops request, uh, Redis ops request, with which we can just easily, uh, with a single command, we can just easily, a single YML, we just easily run our, uh, we can upgrade our database easily. So yeah. Then uh, we have the support for horizontal and vertical scaling. Uh, in case of just increasing or the decreasing our, in case of just in increasing or decreasing our nodes, or uh, if you want to uh, increase your CPU or memory, you can also do that with our vertical scaling of request. Then, uh, like if you have initially started with some sorts of configuration, then after some periods of time, you realize that you need to optimize your configuration. Then you can also do that with our reconfiguration of request uh, uh, features, uh, which is also enterprise uh, features, uh, which is available in our enterprise edition. So, yeah. Uh, So uh, let's just start with our demo. Uh, I'm just using this one. Uh, let's uh, open my terminal. So let's take a look at the uh, uh, at our workstation first. Uh, uh, I'm kindly using kind cluster to uh, kind cluster to uh, for, for our presentation uh, for our demo presentation. So let's check the version here. Uh, you can see that the kind version here is uh, 0 0.8.1. I guess which one is the latest one. Uh, then let's check the kubectl version. So you can see that uh, our cluster server version is 1.21, uh, which is the new Kubernetes release one. So yeah, uh, both are in our upgraded one, upgraded version, latest versions. So uh, we have some pre-requests like uh, we have already installed some uh, uh, Helm list. So let's just uh, check the Helm. Here we have uh, installed the Prometheus for our uh, server cluster monitoring. Then we have the QD catalog one, uh, which is actually uh, the uh, for version CRDs, then there is community one, keep the point one, which is actually for our community version, uh, community editions. Then the, there is another one for our QDB enterprise, which is actually for our enterprise uh, features. Then there is the stash one, which is actually for our backup and recovery features. So, yeah. And we have also installed a start manager uh, with our YML, like if you want to see, you can see that here, uh, like there are three ports running for start manager, which actually help us to configure our server uh, uh, with TLS. So let's deploy a minimal YML file first for our Redis. So today, well, today in our demonstration, we have earlier said that we are going to demonstrate a Sentinel cluster. So firstly, what we need to do is, like we need to create a Sentinel first. So let's just take a look at our Sentinel YML here. Uh, so here is our Sentinel YML. So you can see that uh, the kind here is Redis Sentinel, uh, and which is actually a version kubedb.com here on alpha two. Then we have the name sent, uh, uh, then the name is first demo. Then the version here is the 6.2.5, which is actually latest one. Then the replicas, uh, replica count actually, this one is three. So, and there is the uh, issue reference, uh, so, Firstly, what we need to do is like, uh, we need to create this issuer. Uh, so this issuer is actually used uh, to uh, configure our server. So first, what we need to do is like, we need to create the, this issuer. If we just take a look at our issuer YML here, 
you can see that uh, the kind here is Ishwa and the name is CA Ishwar. Uh, then there is secret name Redis here, which actually holds the uh, root share uh, certificate and key. So first what we need to do is like, we need to create this secret. So let's just uh, try to create this secret first. So, sorry, I haven't created the name space yet. So let's just create this one, demo. Then let's try. So we have created our ready secret. Let's just now try to apply this issue or YML. Uh, like you can see that the secret name here is ADC, which we have created already. So let's just uh, try to create a KC apply issuer. So we have created our issuer. Let's just take a look at our issuer first. So you can see that the ready status here is true. So we can use this. Uh, uh, issuer now. So the issuer name is CA issuer here. So let's just get back to the Sentinel YML again. Uh, then you can see that in this TLS spec, we have the issuer reference where we have provided the name CA issuer. So, uh, uh, and uh, you can see that here is the storage one GBA and uh, access mode is read write once, then dimension policy is wiped out. We have several dimension policy, like uh, we have do not time your time, uh, time your policy, which is actually uh, will warn you before deleting your uh, Redis cluster. Uh, and uh, there are other dimension policies like delete, uh, then there are some few dimension policy uh, also. And there is monitoring, uh, Agent uh, monitoring is where we are providing the monitoring uh, agent uh, the, with which we are going to monitor our Freddy Sentinel. So here is the agent from which is IO dot operator. So let's just uh, try to deploy this one. Uh, You can see that it is in provisioning state. So we need some shorts of times to uh, uh, make this status ready. There, there are some process need to run. So let's wait for this status to be ready. Mm. It is still in provisioning state. Uh, let's check, it. Uh, yeah, it is ready now, you can see that. Uh, so what I can do now, uh, like uh, uh, next we can just uh, apply our uh, Redis uh, uh, cluster. So let's just take a look at our Redis cluster YML here. So here is our Redis cluster YML. Uh, so the, the kind is Redis. Uh, then the name is demo rd. Then we have the same version as Sentinel here. Then you can see that the replica is three. Then there are Sentinel reference. Actually, we are, as we are uh, uh, deploying this cluster uh, as Sentinel cluster, so we need to uh, uh, refer to uh, the Sentinel by, by which this cluster should monitor. So we have the past, past the Sentinel reference here. So the, the name is here Sentinel. You can see that the, our Sentinel name is here Sent. So we have uh, the same name here, which is we are going to monitor our Redis cluster. Then the mode is Sentinel. Then the TLS uh, spec here is the issuer reference that we have created earlier, the issuer, CI issuer. Then the other configure as usual with the Sentinel one. So let's just deploy this one. So it, uh, it is creating now. Let's just watch uh, the sync uh, this. So you can see that the state is positioning here. So let's just wait for it to be ready. Uh, in the meantime, let's check the versions, uh, ready versions uh, uh, that we are actually supporting right now. So you can see that we have the support for 4.0.11. Then 4.0.6, then 5.0.3, then 6.0.6, .6, and the latest one is 6.2.5.
So in the, uh, you can see that the state is ready now. So the TV is actually running, uh, ready to accept the connection here. Uh, if you just uh, uh, watch the points. So we have uh, three uh, different service for our uh, Redis cluster, like demo RD. You can see that there is demo RD. One, one, one point serv in, in point service here is demo RD. Another is demo RD ports. And the other one is demo RD standby. So uh, the demo RD one actually is, the, is uh, pointing, uh, pointing to the uh, port, which is actually the kind master right now. If we just... Uh, uh, to get all the ports with IP, then we can see that the IP here is 10.244.0.23. Uh, so here you can see that this one is the IP of the demo RD0. So this port is actually current master right now. And uh, the demo RD ports is headless, is a headless service, which actually uh, have the all the port uh, port IP here uh, for the demo RD uh, database. Uh, then there is the demo RD standby. Like uh, here is the two ports IP. You can see that uh, the one one the one is here demo RD one and the other one is demo RD two. So uh, the standby actually point uh, point to the uh, uh, the. Uh, the slave of the uh, current primary server. So let's just uh, uh, try to insert some uh, dummy data here. Uh, if we just uh, exit into our uh, demo RD0, then let's try to connect our client as a Redis server client as a, in our Redis server. So, sorry, uh, you can see that we have connected to our TV. Let's put some data here, like uh, set uh, hello world. So we have write uh, data properly. Let, let's uh, write another one. Like, So uh, uh, now uh, uh, let's uh, add this from here. So you can see that uh, the uh, cluster is ready now to accept connection. So you can use the, uh, this one in our uh, uh, production or something like that. So uh, if we just... Uh, yeah, now let's just try to uh, uh, try to backup uh, the backup. Uh, try to uh, configure our backup configuration for this uh, cluster and see if the stash actually uh, done the backup properly or not. So, so we are going to uh, take the backup in a S3 bucket from Linode, uh, and then we are going to store the, this data in Linode S3 bucket. Then, uh, in the restore process, we are going to restore the uh, from that uh, S3 bucket to another database. So let's just uh, uh, start with the backup process. So as we are uh, saying that we are going to uh, use S3 bucket from Linode. So we need to provide some shorts of credentials so that we can access this S3 bucket. So let's just pay, uh, create a uh, secret credential, secret with credentials of the, uh, this uh, uh, Linode uh, bucket. So let's just create a secret. So, Here you can see that we have created a S3 secret where we are going to uh, have put some put the uh, Linux credentials. Uh, then uh, let's uh, uh, we need to uh, specify the uh, S3 repository where we are going to store our data. So let's just create a S3 repository which is actually a CRD uh, from Stash. So let's just take a look at our uh, S3 repository YML. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you can see that we have a kind name repository, which is actually from Stash. So, uh, here is the name of our repository S3 repo, then it is going to be created in namespace demo. 
Then we have, in our spec section, we have a field like back end. So here we have provided our ST uh, information where we're going to store our data. So you can see that the endpoint is here, uh, us is the one remote object.com. So this one is actually our, uh, our region uh, specific uh, uh, URL. Then there is the bucket uh, stash backup. So we're going to create our backup in a bucket named stash backup. Then uh, the region here is is to uh, us is the one. Then the prefix here is release two. So we are going to create a folder, you know, sorry, uh, create a repository inside this bucket naming release two. Then we are going to create it, and uh, then we are going to store our data there. So let's just uh, deploy this one. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, there is a store secret name. So we have, uh, you can see that we have created a secret here, S3 secret, which is actually the credential uh, secret for our. Uh, S3 bucket. So here we have just provided this secret. So let's just uh, apply this one. S3 uh, before. Okay. Then uh, again, now what we need to do is like we need to create a. Mm, backup configuration. So for this uh, backup configuration, uh, let's just uh, do one thing here is uh, we can see one uh, lots of ports here. So just uh, need this demo for demo and in space port. So we just watch this new demo ports here. So yeah, uh, you can see that there are six ports now, three from Sentinel, three from uh, demo uh, RD database. So what we need to do next here is like we need to create a backup configuration where we are going to provide the uh, needed information for our backup. So let's just take a YML uh, at our backup configuration. So YML first. So yeah. So you can see that here is the kind is backup configuration. Then we are going to have some have a name like say for example it is backup. Then the name space is demo here. Then there is important one, there is schedule. So uh, uh, by which, uh, after the gap, some, some show, if, if you want to, like here we are uh, providing like information that we need to uh, need a backup in every five minutes so that, uh, so the backup conversion is going to trigger the backup session in every five uh, minutes. So, so we are going to like uh, uh, backuping our data of, uh, after every five minutes uh, continuously. Uh, you can just uh, change this one, this value to like one hour or one day, anything that uh, preferred your uh, production backup. So let's just uh, deploy this one. So the initial backup will be after five uh, minutes uh, uh, of deploying this one. So let's just deploy this one. And then here you can see that we have the repository name. So the repository name here is actually is the, uh, we are the one we have earlier created. Like uh, you can see that we have created the, uh, 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 here the uh, S3 repo. Uh, then you can, here is the target. So the target one actually is the, the reference to the DB app binding where we are going to, uh, which DB we are going to actually, uh, are going to take backup from. So, uh, QTB actually already created this uh, app binding. Like uh, if you see the app bindings here, you can see that there are two app binding, like one is for demo RD and the other one is for Sen, uh, Sentinel, uh, Ready Sentinel Sen. So uh, the, uh, this app binding actually uh, uh, help us to uh, connect as a client. Uh, uh, so, any kind of uh, information that we need from uh, need to connect our uh, demo RD DB, the, 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 this is contained by app binding. So yeah, uh, you can just uh, need to in our Redis called backup configuration. Uh, backup configuration just need to provide this app binding name. The as the, this one is demo RD, so we have just provided this name. And then is some for some orientation policies. There is some sorts of orientation policy where we have uh, said that we are going to take uh, like we are going to keep last five backup. Then the other backup, the, the older backup are going to be deleted. So let's just uh, deploy this one.
So we're going to deploy the backup configuration here. So we have created the backup configuration here. Let's watch the backup session. So you can see that we have don't we, have, we don't have any backup session right now. It is going to be created after five minutes. So what we can do now is like wait for five minutes or we can just trigger one backup immediately. So we are going to uh, do the second one. Like we, we are going to backup, triggering one backup immediately with our backup session YML. So let's just uh, see the backup session YML here. You can see that uh, there is a spec where we are going to say that we are going to trigger the backup configuration naming this one immediately. So let's just deploy this one. So we have just deployed this one. You can see that after uh, 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 applying this one, we have just immediately we have a uh, job which is going to take our uh, which is going to take our database backup. It is running in running phase now. Let's wait for some uh, minutes so that uh, can be uh, like the phase can be succeed. It is still in running phase. Uh, let's wait for a few more minutes. Uh, okay, a few minutes. Yeah, you can see that this one is succeeded. So yeah, our backup has been succeeded uh, properly. Uh, so let's just, uh, as we don't need to, uh, any backup right now after this one, so let's just pause our backup configuration. So we don't uh, have to, we don't take any other backup right now. So we have just passed our backup condition with the value false true. So we have passed our backup configuration with the value post true here. So we are not going to take any backup. Uh, as we have already one with, with which we can just restore our database. Now, if we just uh, take a look at our uh, Linode uh, ST bucket here, uh, this one is actually our bucket uh, bucket name stash backup that we have provided in our S3 repo here. So, and there is also a prefix edis2. So you can just uh, try to find out the folder edis2 here. If we just try, we can see that here is the edis2 uh, file, uh, edis2 uh, repository, and there is the data that we have uh, just now back up for our DB database demo already. So what we are going to try to do next, like we are going to delete this uh, cluster and we are going to create a new one. And then uh, at, this, at this new one, we are going to uh, apply the restore session uh, with which we are going to restore our data. So let's just do this. Uh, let's just uh, delete this one. Uh, so I'm going to uh, keep CTL lead uh, name space demo, then demo RD. So uh, I have deleted uh, the uh, name space here. And, uh, so yes, uh, not the name space, like not, uh, the DB cluster here. Then you can see that the ports are in terminating state. Uh, so let's just wait for a few uh, moments to terminate these ports. In the meantime, let's take a look at our uh, new uh, 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 new YML that we are going to deploy. So we have uh, uh, we are going to create this uh, this cluster named this restore RD. And then we have the configuration like version 6.2.5, then replica street, then the Sentinel reference, which is the same Sentinel that we have created earlier. Then the, there is TLS issuer reference. Uh, here we have provided the issuer, say issuer. Then the other configure same as the previous one. So let's just deploy this one. You can see that we have terminated those uh, demo RD ports. Let's just apply this one right now. You can see that it has been created. Let's just wait for a few moments to 
uh, become the status uh, ready here. So there are uh, uh, some status like uh, provisioning where the database is actually provisioning to, re uh, to become the ready. Uh, actually, there are, there are some initial configuration that we need to set up. Uh, in, this, in this phase, we are going to set up those, those uh, field. Then uh, we have uh, another status like not ready. So in not ready status, uh, uh, here you can see that the, this one is ready. But in case if you see any anything like not ready, then the, that means that uh, the primary pod with which we are going to connect, the pod is not ready right right now. So we are not we are not going to like uh, write uh, read or write any operation in our primary. Uh, and there is another status like critical. In critical status, uh, there is the primary pod is running, but uh, if there are three pod or like five pod, then any of the, the other, any of the replica pod is not in running states. Uh, that's why the status how, how it is critical. So I think uh, you have the proper understanding of the status for our QTP uh, uh, managed database. Then, uh, you, can, uh, you can see that uh, the DB is ready now, so we can just uh, try our uh, restore session with this uh, with this uh, cluster. Let's uh, before uh, trying the restore, let's try to exact into our uh, restore uh, uh, DB. Then let's check if there exists any any data that we have write earlier. So let's just enter into the uh, as a client in Redis server, then try to get the value we have earlier set. Like you can see that the value, we have tried to get the value and the value is here nil. Like uh, there is no value here right now. So we are going to do next, like uh, we are going to just uh, restore the session, restore, uh, restore our data and then we'll again check if the data exists or not. So let's just exit from here. Then uh, what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to create a restore session as we have earlier created a backup session to backup. Then we have the same thing like this uh, for the restore to restore. Uh, we have a restore session where we can just restore our data from the S3 repo that we have created earlier. So you can see that uh, we have the kind here is restore session and the name here is ready test. And the name space here is demo then if we just look into the spec, here we have say the same function as backup configuration here. You can see that we have the repository spec and then in the restore session, we have also, sorry, uh, just uh, that we have also that spec repository S3 repo, which is actually have created earlier for our bucket information, uh, bucket information like the bucket name, then prefix, and there is a target reference and the app binding of our uh, currently created restore uh, RD database. Like if you just get the app binding now, just get app binding here. So you can see that here is a uh, app binding named restore RD. So with this, uh, here we have provided the connection, client connection information with which the stash is going to connect to our DB and uh, it's going to restore our uh, database here. So let's just uh, create this restore session and then there is a rules where we have, <coughs> sorry. So there is a rules uh, where we have said that we are going to back, uh, take backup from the latest snapshots. So let's just deploy this one like, uh, <coughs> so we're going to apply this restore session here. After uh, registration, you can see that this is now the data restoring. So uh, this uh, means that it is going to uh, store data from, and it's all in registered now. If we just uh, try to get the register session here, so we can see that output of the registration. You can see that the registered uh, restore session has been succeeded uh, properly. So let's just try to exit into our pod and try to get some data if we the data we have written earlier is present or not. Like, uh, let's just exit into our pod here. So you can see that, let's just connect to our DB. Then let's just try to get, uh, get the value we have uh, set earlier in our demo RD database. Yeah, you can see that uh, the data is existing now. Let's just get another one, like hi. So hi from F-Scott, yeah. 
so we can see that uh, we have properly uh, stored uh, our uh, back. Uh, we have properly just doing our backup successfully, and then we have uh, created another DB, and then uh, we have uh, successfully uh, uh, restored our data in the DB. So uh, as we have earlier said that um, uh, the cluster uh, that release cluster uh, in our QTB is uh, uh, like uh, has the automated failover. Let's just uh, so uh, in uh, automated failover, like uh, we are uh, trying to say that like uh, if we just uh, get the endpoints here and if we just get the ports here with uh, sorry. Uh, so, so just uh, so here you can see that uh, this one is actually the uh, service endpoint for restore rd and here is the endpoint name is uh, the ip is 10.244.0.33 so this ip actually is the restore port zero ip so we can say that this port is actually the uh, uh, primary here and the others are uh, here are the replica. Let's try to uh, uh, try try the try to simulate the failover and see if this uh, IP changed or not. So we are, what we are going to do here is like we are going to just uh, exit into the uh, primary, then uh, connect our uh, like database. Then we are going to disconnect. Uh, we are going to uh, re uh, refuse uh, every connection from this uh, restore uh, RD zero. So what we are going to do is like debug sleep. So we're going to refuse every connection for next forty second. So let's just try this one. So uh, forty second. So let's just try this one. If we see that uh, here are the still the uh, ip is the same one as 10 for top you can see that the ip has been changed here and if you just uh, uh, try to get the ports here so you can see that the 37 is the uh, port ip of the restore rd2 so you can see that uh, we have uh, uh, we have the uh, we have the failover in a very early short period of time. Uh, actually, this one is actually maintained by the uh, sentinel we have created earlier. So this uh, this sentinel is actually maintaining all this fail automated failover. Then there is another sidecar for this uh, restore. <laughs> Uh, restore RD database uh, here, which is actually going to uh, point the the uh, the primary here from this sidecar. So yeah. Uh, 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 we have also uh, uh, launching a dashboard for our Redis uh, cluster. Uh, this is actually uh, <coughs> maintained by uh, QTB. Like uh, we have, you can if you, if we want, you can just uh, see this one. Like let's just close this one. Let's close this one. Let's just close this one. Then. Uh, so, so we have already installed Prometheus here. You can see that like uh, Prometheus, uh, Grafana and the other. Uh, let's just uh, put for this Grafana port here. Uh, then if we just try to connect this, uh, Um, uh, let's just uh, try to, yeah, you can see that. Uh, here you can see that we have uh, the uh, uh, like uh, Sentinel here, uh, uh, the Sentinel port here, uh, like Sen Sentinel zero here, uh, which is actually in running state. Then the mod is here Sentinel. Actually, this one is as this one is Sentinel, so it shows the Sentinel one. 
then the, there is master name and this role actually there is no sentinel role for this sentinel course so there is no role not available here uh, if we just try to uh, restore take uh, get, get the restore rd0 so you can see that the restore rd0 ports uh, role is slave here then the uh, status is running here then you can see that there is one master available uh, like sorry uh, this not this one this uh, rd2 is actually master here uh, then uh, you can see that uh, the, how many many uh, how much memory it is going to use like uh, the memory is here is 2 mb then you can see the uptime here also then we can see that the master here is one and the uh, slips the total number of slips here is two and the total number of master is here one then we can also see the connection clients like uh, how many connected clients right now here uh, there are some other features like cluster shard slow. This actually is not uh, applicable for our Redis Sentinel cluster. This one is actually for our sharding cluster. So, uh, and this one is also. And then you can, if you just uh, uh, enroll a little bit below, then you can see that we have the uh, highest uh, uh, command that we have run, uh, the number of times we have run our commands. Here you can see that all the commands like auth, client, config, and info. Then you can see the latency and the other information. Like, then uh, <clears throat> you can see that how much data we have in our demo DB0. There is two data, like we have already catered to, like which, uh, the first one, uh, uh, hello world and the uh, high F score. Uh, so it shows that we have the two keys uh, in our DB0. Then you can see that in, in other DBs, we don't have any data. So it's all zero. <clears throat> So that's uh, all from my dashboard and that's all from my side. Thank you everyone. Uh, uh, please, uh, please ask any question if you guys have. Okay, so uh, thank you Imon uh, for the demo. Uh, so yeah, so today we saw the, you know, the Redis Sentinel setup, Redis cluster setup, backup process for that. Um, so you can uh, visit our website, kipdb.com uh, and find the documentation on this uh, under the Redis section. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask here, or you can also ask questions by writing in the chat. Uh, some of you have already talked to us uh, uh, through our Discord servers. So yeah, you can also follow up there if you have uh, further questions. Kamal, we have uh, some question in the chat. Can you take a look? Yeah, okay. Okay, so there's a first question from Dennis. Uh, what cluster setup this Sentinel brings us compared to the spec uh, version 6.0 uh, cluster? So yeah, so this one is the two replica mode. Uh, um, so if you have a Redish cluster, so that you know the cluster term is a little uh, confusing with Redish. So what Redish officially says when you have a cluster, it's a, like a sharded cluster. So you have a number of shards, uh, and then each shard has its own replicas. So let's say you can have a three shard and then each shard has its own, let's say three replicas. So you actually have nine Redish pods running. So it's a, you know, it's necessary if you have a lot of uh, uh, data that you store in Redis, you want to scale it up then the clustering mode is for you. But then there's the Sentinel mode is the kind of the more commonly used uh, highly available mode. So, so there's the standalone mode where you have only one pod Reddish pod running, but then in the Sentinel mode, the highly available mode, uh, you have the master node running, and then the master node, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, basically replicates the data to one or more replica nodes. So, so this is the the kind of the common. Uh, so, you, you know, if you want to have like a two pod setup where one is a master and one is a secondary, uh, this is the one for that. So that's the Sentinel mode. Um, have you seen any diff performance difference between uh, KubeDB and Redish? So, 
uh, I think uh, David, this is the uh, I think you asked us this question before. Uh, so, if you are in a standalone mode, you shouldn't really see any performance difference. If you are doing clustering, uh, uh, sorry, the Sentinel mode, uh, you shouldn't even uh, see any major performance difference. I think uh, when you're talking about performance difference, if you are using clustering mode, uh, and if you are coming from outside the cluster, or or when you are writing data to that cluster, uh, if you are writing data, uh, so in the Redish, when you're writing data to a Redish cluster, what it will do is uh, if you send your write commands to sort of the wrong shard, it will automatically internally route that traffic. So if you are looking at just a latency number, so one Redish running as a standalone mode and one Redish running is a clustering mode, you will see higher latency in the clustering mode is just because you are, you know, because it's an extra network traffic that is happening. Uh, but if you, you know, so if you are using clustering, I think uh, um, uh, the um, example that you saw, but if you, you know, so if you are running the same configuration with KubeDB and without KubeDB, it, there shouldn't be any difference. Uh, I mean, if you have any such cases, let us know. But uh, you know, in our testing, we don't see any difference. But if you are reusing the different reddish modes, uh, you might see some performance difference in terms of latency. Uh, and then even in the clustering mode, uh, there are ways uh, you can actually make sure that when you write the commands, it goes to the correct sort of shard. Uh, but that that needs some changes from the application side or the client side. Uh, to make sure the data is always going to the correct shard and that way you will not have that extra uh, hop inside Redish cluster and, and it will kind of help you reduce your latency. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, so the Sentinel thing has been uh, added just recently, uh, basically with the release that you see 2021-0930. That's, that one has the uh, Sentinel mode support added. So yeah, let's try that. And if you have any questions, uh, let us know. Uh, Milano, thank you uh, for joining. Um, and uh, anyone else? Yeah, thank you for answering my question. Uh, yeah, my pleasure. Uh, any, any other question, anybody? Okay, uh, yeah, so so thanks again uh, for joining. Yeah, as usual, you can go to our website or uh, follow us on Twitter, QDB, uh, sort of see updates for the project or new releases when it comes out, we will uh, push uh, updates there. Uh, you can email us, hello at appscore.com for, uh, or support at appscore.com for any questions you have. Uh, we're ha always happy to answer. Uh, if you're interested in uh, buying an enterprise license for our product, you can also visit qdb.com uh, and, and you know, just let us know. Uh, there is a pricing page from there. Uh, so we can follow up from there offline. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Bye.